All right, we're gonna try our first lab here, Circuits Basic. I'm gonna do my best to show you um, how you would see it as a student. Unfortunately, some parts would be easier to have two hands, but I tried it with a GoPro and it just didn't work right. So here we go. So first of all, here are our symbols. A wire, which is just that, okay, a wire. Our cast of, L of characters here, a battery. Here's our battery. Notice though that the drawing here, and these are just symbols to make it easier on you to, to draw. Notice the bumpy side of the battery, right, is the long end. The, this side here, which is not bumpy, is the short end. Positive, negative, positive, negative. We have a switch, which looks like this. Okay, it goes up and down, simple enough. A resistor. Now, even though these aren't real resistors, uh, there are real resistors inside them. You'll learn that later on. This is for learning purposes, okay? So, this right here would be simplified into this. You have a positive and a negative end, bumpy side, positive, negative, all right? So build the circuit at the left, which of course has a battery going that direction, a light bulb and a switch. So we're gonna put in a battery, a light bulb, and the switch, okay? And we're gonna put a wire there. Don't have to, those are wires as well. Here we go. So, oh, and it came on. When the switch is open, when the switch is closed. Open, closed. So, um, if your light bulb does not turn on, let's show you, I actually have over here, uh, one of them that, one of these was not working for me earlier. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, I think it was this one. So let me go ahead and put a bad battery holder in here and show you how I would deal with that. A little hard again with only one hand. Hopefully I can pull this off. battery in here and notice light bulb not on okay so I take this I move it over here it wasn't that wire that was the problem is it the switch maybe still not on um, now again hard to do with only one hand but I would put this against the two sides of the battery and please did I get it yeah you can see it there it is the light bulb came on so which wire is there? What's the problem? So notice, again, not on. I touch it to this side. Okay, light bulb came on, which tells me it's this wire that's not working. So I'm just not gonna use that battery holder, okay? Away with ye. All right, so I have a light bulb, battery, and a switch. And a wire. Now, it says, once your light bulb is working, disconnect one end of a wire. Any wire, da 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 da. Light bulb went on. Light bulb went on. Off, on. Off, on. What happened? Turned off. You should be doing this yourself. Disconnect one end of a different battery. What happened? Turned off. We saw that, right? When you, dis when you disconnect a wire, you've created what's known as an open circuit. As you've just proven, electricity only works with closed circuits. Think about it like a loop of, um, of pipes with water going through it. The water can't go through if there's a break. From now on, we'll say a circuit when we mean a closed circuit, a complete loop with no breaks. But what materials make a circuit? Materials that allow the flow of electricity are called conductors. Materials that resist the flow are called insulators. In your circuit, replace the switch with two long wires. To make it easier on me, I'm just gonna open here or that little spot right there, okay? That's my opening. So let's see what I've got here. It says a penny. Um, somewhere I have a penny here. Yeah, put that across the two pieces and light bulb came on. Light bulb came on. So a penny is a conductor. Oh, it said paper. I don't know why I keep skipping that one. So paper. Light bulb does not come on. So paper is a insulator. Likewise, I have a piece of cardboard here. Insulator, another type of paper. Paper clip. Paper clip. Light bulb comes on. Paper clip is a conductor. Glass. There's some glass. Mm, didn't work. Insulator. Plastic, um, you know, these right here, the outside is plastic, so I'll use that. Insulator. 
cloth. Well, I have this right here. It's kind of a type of cloth. Insulator. I could use my shirt. Insulator. I mean, you're probably getting this already. Wood. Um, I did have a mousetrap here. Mousetrap. It's got wood on it. Insulator. A dime. I did not have a dime. Uh, but I have this thing here that's got different types of metals. And let's put them across here. So... Uh, it's hard to see. Here we go. So, here we go. Boom. Conductor. Conductor. There. Touching. Conductor. I'm not sure if I've done this one or not. Uh, uh, hard to do again with the hands. From here to there. Can't even touch these. Ready? I'm not sure what jumped on there. Oh, it's by a wire. Come on, get on there. There we go, conductor. God, that's hard with only one hand. Sorry about that. So basically, what did we find out? Conductors are made up from metals. Okay, now put the switch in your circuit and make sure the light bulb turns on. Da 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 da. Okay, reverse the direction of the battery. Still on. Has the light changed? No change. Therefore, does it matter what the direction of the current, and the current is the electricity that's flowing, and there's no difference. In this case, there's other things that we'll find out. Add a second battery, and let's make sure it's in the same direction. Battery. And again, fun, 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 with only one hand. I'm trying not to break these. It's already putting strain on it. Um, hopefully this is one that works. If not, we'll find out soon enough. And, oh, oh, same direction. Light bulb very much brighter. I'm gonna turn that off to save electricity. Uh, much brighter. I could have put just brighter, but look much brighter to me. So more batteries cause more brightness or current. Reverse one of the batteries, okay. Nothing. This battery is flowing clockwise. This one's flowing counterclockwise. Now let me prove this to you in a third way. I've got another holder here. Let me get this in the circuit. Sorry. Needed a second hand. All right, I'm going to put this in, say, here. And I'm going to put the battery. Come on, another battery. Okay. Actually, I need to make sure that this battery holder works. So I'm going to put a battery. Jeez. Oh, this battery holder may not work. Oh, it does. Very excellent. Okay, so. Excellent, Smithers. Excellent. Okay, so notice I have two batteries going one way and one battery going the other way. And the light bulb comes on as if it were only one battery. These two batteries are overwhelming this one. So we have basically two voltages one way and one voltage the other, which gives us one net voltage. I'm not going to do that for very long. It's not going to like blow up or anything, but it's not good for the batteries, I assume. So let me get rid of that third battery. Bye-bye. Okay, so let's see what it says over here. Reverse one of the batteries. How does the brightness light bulb change? It went off. Now, if you have one battery that's that's new and another battery that's weak, it's possible that it came on, but really small or very, very dim. Batteries give something called voltage, which pushes electricity through the circuit. More batteries give more voltage, more push. Also, batteries push in a particular direction. We just saw that. You must always pay attention to the direction of the batteries in your circuit. Just like forces, if they push in opposite directions, they cancel each other out. Add another light bulb to your circuit. So notice two light bulbs in the same direction and two. So first of all, Here's okay, two light bulbs, same direct, same direction. Uh, where's another light bulb? Here we go. So let's put two light bulbs and two batteries, and we get hmm, it's dimmer. How much dimmer? Well, doesn't that look a lot like how much it was with? Jeez, I just can't reach all these things. I need that wire out of here. So here's one battery, one light bulb. That's how bright it is. 
Here's two light bulbs, two batteries. I would say those are very close. So in other words, this one is using this much voltage. This one's using that much voltage. Okay, turn that off. Brightness, um, uh, uh, how do I put this? The brightness, hard to write also when I'm not holding the paper. Brightness of one bulb, one battery, okay? Light bulbs resist the flow of electricity because they have resistance. Think about that like you have a pipe and you're crunching down the pipe, okay? The more you crunch down the pipe, the less water can flow, the less current can flow like electricity. Okay, unscrew one of your light bulbs. Okay, let's get her on. Light bulbs are on. I unscrew one light bulb, the other one goes off. Both go off. Okay, screw in the light bulb again and unscrew the second light bulb. They both go off. Okay, both off. Why? You might want to pause and think about that. I want to push on. Pause if you need to. Why? Um, either, oh sorry, a break anywhere breaks the circuit. The whole circuit, I'll put it that way. I am really apologize about my handwriting. I'm not trying to write sloppy, it's just hard again. This is known as a series circuit because they're in series. It has to go one, then the other, then the other. When you unscrew a light bulb or you make a break in any part of the circuit, it's no longer a closed circuit. So by the way, I can show that here, watch. They both go off. Open the switch, they both go off. Break here, they both go off. Anywhere that you put a break in the wire, it's like putting a door up that can't flow, okay? So, two batteries, one light bulb, okay? Two batteries, one light bulb, okay? You're not so stupid, there you go. And it says, then add one of the colored resistors. So, here's the blue one. That came on a little bit, can you see that? It's on a little bit, that's the blue light bulb. Put the red light, the red one in. Didn't come on at all. I don't see it at all. And the green one. Ah, that's brightest. So green is the least resisting. It's letting it's letting current through. The blue one lets some current through. And the red one doesn't seem to let enough in that we can even see it. There's, there's, there's current going through, but it's not enough for us to see. Okay, so now let's write that down. Fill in the table at the right. Which one is the biggest resistor? The red. Smallest resistor? Green, and then the blue one was a medium. Okay, remember, more resistance, it, 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 it resists it from going through. All right, so now, well, hopefully you can hear me. Baby's asleep, so I'm trying to be quiet here. So I've got a battery, and I can actually use my hands here. So uh, what they call light bulb. Let's see if I can do this. So I'm just going to attach that right there, and that's just going to have to be the way to do it. So if I take and I attach, say, I try to go from here across like this, light bulb doesn't come on. If I do this, light bulb doesn't come on, although I saw a small spark there. Um, try to get to where you can actually see the light bulb itself. Oh, there you go. So, and so there's the trick, okay? Now, here's the deal, so that you can see it. <clears throat> I don't think you can actually see inside a light bulb. Maybe one of these new light bulbs I have would be better. You may or may not. There's the, all right, can you, I don't see in there or not. Unfortunately, I don't think you can see it, but there's wires, and the deal is that these wires go from this point around up here and then connect to here. And this black stuff here it, it is an enamel or something that's that's uh, <clears throat> making sure that these two are not connected to an insulation. So on this little diagram here, over here, notice this one will work. This one will not because it just bypasses with the conductor. This will work. It's the reverse of this, and since a light bulb allows you to do both, and then this won't work because obviously that's a 
that's an insulator here. So notice that doesn't work. So again, the side and the bottom, and that's what works. Okay. All right. I have a light bulb and fresh water here. I mean, water from the from the circuit uh, faucet, and I have 30 volts going here. It'll take me a while to show you that. But anyway, putting these close. There's a sizzling there, and I'm sorry I can't get rid of that. But anyway, notice the light is not on. However, let me get these close without touching. I've already touched it several times and broken light bulb. It made me mad. Let me add salt. Salt in a solution. Come on, baby. And there you go. Another, the light bulb is on. So salt, salt water works. By the way, I don't have sugar to show you, but sugar water does not. Now, the really cool thing, that sizzling right there, it's actually uh, called um, electrolysis. It's actually breaking apart the, the water into oxygen and hydrogen. In the early 18, uh, 18th century, when they finally realized this around uh, Faraday's time, that was remarkable because water, fire, ice, etc., those were all considered fundamental properties. And here you are breaking it apart. And if you capture that, you actually get hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen can add a spark and you get... You get fire again, it'll, look, it'll go a little pop. You okay, notice right now it's not the light's not on. I get close enough. Oh, why isn't the light on? Hope I didn't touch them. It's on earlier, wasn't it? I think so. Put some more salt in there. It may be that the salt is spreading out in the, in the water. That's it. This, it's actually diluting it because it's actually going out. Okay, there you go. Now we're here. So turns out that fresh water is, is an insulator. And sugar water is an insulator because it's a it's a covalent compound. Don't have time for that. Don't have it set up, and I apologize. And salt water is a conductor. Now, real quickly, this is not to say that that water does not conduct electricity. Um, if I have a, a big resistor and I push hard enough, I can still go through it. That's why you don't go putting things in around water that have electricity. You don't have wires in your bathtub and so forth. There are people that have been electrocuted that way because the wall has 120 volts. Here it's only 30 volts. We're not talking about a lot of voltage. And also the other thing is that the, the wires in your, in your house can put out a lot of amps, enough to kill you. You only need a half an amp to go, less than a half an amp to, going through your heart to kill you. So do be careful with the water and electricity, obviously.